the life, the legacy, and the message of God's advocate of human rights. But it was there on the campus of Boston University that I was also exposed to the workings, the writings, and the coursework of Professor Ellie Wiesel. That may be a name that's unfamiliar to many of you. Ellie Wiesel was a Hungarian-born Jew God's deepest displeasure with God's people was never around issues of morality. God's deepest issue was not about dietary restrictions. God's deepest displeasure with Israel had nothing to do with their worship. God's deepest displeasure with Israel was how they treated strangers. Yeah. How you deal with them. Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 19, you know the story. Two angels like men come to visit Lot. And while they're there, a mob comes and demands to rape the two men. The angels save Lot, tell them to get out of town. You know the whole pillar of salt thing. How you deal with them. Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 19, you know the story. Two angels like men come to visit Lot. And while they're there, a mob comes and demands to rape the two men. The angels save Lot, tell them to get out of town. You know the whole pillar of salt thing. And the Lord makes reference to Sodom. We know Genesis 19, we know this passage. It's the one people run to to justify their position against homosexuality. Can we be grown for a minute? We run to Genesis 19 because that shows God does not approve of homosexual love. I am not here to debate with you whether that's God's will or not. This sermon has nothing to do with men loving men and women loving women. To same gender love, we have missed three things. Is it possible that Sodom and Gomorrah is about much more than homosexuality? When you limit Sodom and Gomorrah to simply a lesson on homosexuality, you have missed three things. Number one, Sodom and Gomorrah is not about same gender love. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rechaha Kodash and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you brethren, you fellow followers and believers of this faith, even you few sisters, and shalom to the hopeful elect. Peace to you. Shalom to the elect. So anyway, um, I don't know if anyone's done a video on this, but I, I'm just now seeing it where this pastor is now changing the Bible from what Sodom and Gomorrah actually was, right? So first things first, it's probably a lot to go into. He says that it's, it has nothing to do with a moral act, right? It had nothing to do 
with the dietary laws. This is this this is what these preachers are saying now. They're trying to bring you back into captivity, right? Everybody knew what it was, but now they're going with this new form of theology according to doctrine. Now where's I've seen a few Christians fight against this, but where's all you Christians taken up against this? Everybody should have got up and walked out of there, man. That believed in the most high. Well, they don't believe in the most high the way we do. It says the word moral. He said it has nothing to do with moral, right? What we see here is characterized by the right behavior, right? We understand it's bigger than words. It's action. And it's not just, you know, action. It's faith. That's where we fast forward to now. Because you might say, okay, we, we all sin. So this is an excuse to sin. No. This is where faith comes in. And this is why you heard the one you call Jesus, Yahawashah, says, go and sin no more. Right? I believe he told the woman that that um, when they cast the stones, and he said, he who has not sinned, let him cast the first stone. But then what did he say? Go and sin no more. Meaning you're not supposed to continue to sin. Now because of the nature of the video, he's allowed to say what he says, but we got to keep it you know, so-called YouTube friendly. <laughs> so anyway, what he's trying to say, basically, is that it's not so much about the actions, it's about the sin. This is what he's saying. That it don't have nothing to do with man and man and woman and woman, same gender. It only has to do with us disobeying the most high, I guess is what he's saying. It has nothing to do with that. Just morally, we was wrong. But he said it had nothing to do with morals. But anyway, let's go to Sirach 12 and 6. For the most high hate of sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly and keepeth them against the mighty, uh, keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. Right? That's what it is. Where did he come with this stuff from? Is it this guy Eli or Eli that taught him all this stuff? Where did he come with that from? Now we know Leviticus 20 and 13, we all know what that says. We should. I believe it's 20 and 13 if a man lies with man. Right? We all should know what that says. But for whatever reason, these guys are just trying to, they're trying to erase it and says, Sodom and Gomorrah had nothing to do with that. So what does Sodom mean? What does Sodom mean? Let's look it up. I never even looked that up. Well, I know what it means, but let's go into the online etymology. Um, it says, a sinful, wicked, corrupt place of uh, destroying the neighbor Gomorrah, Sodom, uh, goes the Sodomite, practices sodomy um, the term abuse directly at least sodom, da, 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 sodomite okay it says biblical especially between men but also with beast right unnatural sexual relationships such as those customs imputed to the inhabitants of biblical sodom especially between men but also with beast right this is what the book of Jude says they're talking about the strange flesh um, the sin of Sodom Sodoma right you get the point so the question is he says it's a, it was about strangers so I'm going to tie all this in he said it was all about wasn't anything else. It wasn't the dietary laws. It wasn't this. It wasn't that. This is what he said. It had nothing to do with dietary laws. It had nothing to do with actions. It had nothing to do with morals. This is what he's saying. But only how we treated strangers. Let's see what the Bible say. Let's go to Exodus 21. Um, and first, in fact, let's get um, let's get uh, what is it? Exodus yeah, 20 and 1. I want to go to another one too. 
Um, it says, let me go to Luke 10 and 27. It says, and, and he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. Right? That is the first commandment. And the second is to love thy neighbor, or you could say stranger, which was other Israelites. That's why when you go to Leviticus, let's go back to Leviticus, see what it says. I'm, I'm going to stay in the New Testament, just for you Christians, all right? So we can just clean, clean all this up at once. It says Mark 12, and I'm going to shoot with 29. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reason together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asking him, which is the first of commandment of all? And Yahweh, they call Jesus, Yahweh answered him, the first of all commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, right? And thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Now, how do you do this? Right? You do this by doing, loving him to the best of your ability. And if that includes not eating seafood, if that includes 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, right? All these things that are being done, then that's what you have to do. You have to love the Lord with all your heart and strength. That means if he says, see, these preachers and pastors, they don't understand the nature of it all and why crabs are in the water, why shellfish are in the water. Why certain bottom feeders are there to eat certain things? Because it's for cleanup. He didn't give it to you as just some ritualistic practice. It's because it's good for you. You're not a heathen. You're not supposed to eat it. And what happened to our people? Our people start following the other gods. Like they follow Chemosh, the, the Ammonite, the Moabite god, right? And they follow and they eat they eat anything out of the water. <laughs> anything but even science proves you're not supposed to eat anything that eats the dead especially dead bodies that's why it's not just some ritualistic practice it's, it's for the fact that it's good for you about the the, uh, uh, the animals even the swine the certain animals you don't eat the ones that crawl on their bellies they're there for a reason they're there for cleanup Let's go to Exodus 20 and 1. And Yahweh speak all the words saying, so he says his, his greatest anger was how we treated the strangers. Where is this guy getting this from? I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the key. And our people wasn't accustomed to Sodom and Gomorrah until he got involved in that. Our people are involved in that. And the Lord says, don't do it. Don't do all the things that are abominable. This is why he said, you are a special people, a holy people, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. means set apart from other people. Right? And you, you can read Exodus 20, and it tells you. But you have a first commandment. So what he says is about the strangers. No, it's about loving the Lord first with all your heart. And if you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and strength, you wouldn't be in 2023 eating pigs and swine's flesh and crabs and lobsters and shrimp because he said, don't do it. See, these people are saying, forget about the law that's going somewhere else. The people are saying, forget about the law. The, the law is done away with because it was carnal. It was made unclean. No, the law was there for a reason, for the benefit of the children of Israel. We still present our bodies as living sacrifices. But the law was made to present to the children of Israel to do good so you can live long and do well by the Heavenly Father. Look at all the laws. So by these guys, these pastors saying throughout the laws, well now you can mess with your own mother, right? But then they'll say, well Jesus came to bring so you're not supposed to sin. Well what did Jesus say? I come to do the will of my Father. The will of his Father was what? Right? It's still about the loss. But through his grace from him dying, 
being hung and dying, that's where we have our mercy until he puts his laws into us in Hebrews the 8th chapter. I didn't want to go in that direction, but this is the way these people think. Right? This is the way these people think. Let's go to James 1 and 15. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Well, what is sin? Let's go to 1 John 3 and 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So again, we can clearly see that um, Matthew 5 and 17, Yahweh said, I come not to destroy the law of the prophets, but to fulfill. But he haven't fulfilled until the Most High put his laws in all of us. Talking about the Israelites. So he hadn't finished, he fulfilled that part, but the law is still here. The law is still here. So for you to sit up there and say the law is done away with is the reason why you got guys like this bringing this stuff up. You Christians, this is your fault. You fake Christians. You're the one pushed the narrative that it's not about the law. Let's go to Romans 3. I just thought of this real quick. I think it's 3 and, 3 and 10, or 3 and 15, or 3 and 20 somewhere around there it's a lot it's a lot of you it's a lot of you Christians fault man you push that narrative it ain't about the law anymore we don't need the law okay let's go on down here let's see let's go here Romans 3 it says but now righteousness of Yahweh without the law is manifest right being witnesses by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of God which is by faith in Yahweh right now why do we need this faith in Yahweh because he is the son of the most high but Yahweh said hey I'm not I'm not here to destroy any laws right he is that sacrifice right he sacrificed himself for us you know to be able to get through the tribulation of not will uh, uh, unknowingly sinning, right? Uh, it says, "For sin, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh, being just." And why was he saying this? You got to go back in the time. What was happening? He had a lot of Israelites that was justifying everything by the law, but by not by the faith. So that's why he sent his son to bring you to the faith. But that never meant to get do away with the law. But it also means that the law is not going to fully save you because everybody can go through the actions but without faith. Like if you get, it's a thing called mercy. If you get a speeding ticket and you, you're in a, you get caught in a speed trap and, they, and a, the um, trooper or whatever give you a warning, that don't mean, okay, I can keep sinning. See, that's what the law was all about. Uh, how they use the law to keep on sinning and making sacrifices. But no, you're not supposed to continue to sin. That's why Yahweh Shah said, go and sin no more. Let me get to the point. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by the law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Why is he saying that? He's saying it's being justified by faith without the deeds of the law because they were making the law carnal. It was all about the law without faith. That's why they come together, and he's going to he's going to clear this up. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? The question mark. Yea, of the Gentiles also, Israelites. Seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Are the Israelites? Do we then make void the law through faith? With a question mark. God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So what he's bringing out here is that. It's a combination of the law and faith. Our faith is what guide us through when we go through the Passovers. And, you know, when you strike the blood of the, the lamb and everything on the doorpost, you can't do. A whole lot of things you can't do. And through the mercies of people who are, which we are in Sodom, before it got destroyed, right? It's all reincarnated, telling them, the other Israelites, that even follow this practice to repent. That's what that's about. 
That's exactly what that's about. Right? Let's go to Romans 1 and 26. Uh, 26. For this cause, Yahweh gave them up to vile affections. This is going into your industry today, the music industry. The men that, they was never into that, but the Lord gave them up to that. For even their women did change the natural use of that which is against nature. Well, let's look up nature. In the online etymology, it means heredity, birth. That's pretty much what it means. To birth, nature, nurture. Um, to be born, natus. Natural comes from nature, which means to be born, right? Or, you know, original, fresh. Okay, let's go on. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly. Wait a minute, isn't this what it said in Leviticus? So why are they trying to say, your Christians are trying to say that the law is done away with. What the heck is this talking about? Is this not talk, lo, talking about Leviticus 20? What's up with that? I thought Jesus came and, did, and done away with the law. Saying the law was filthy. So to say the law is filthy is to say all this that it's talking about is filthy. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 is all filthy. I mean we can go on and on about it. But clearly you Christians have opened the door for this, this uh, type of behavior uh, that's being pushed. That's all I have on that shallow one.